Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and I'm doing some videos about how to use your garter bar. And this video is about how to do a stitch called Quaker Stitch. Now, here's some Quaker Stitch hanging from the machine, and here's some that has been steamed to make it flat. And you can see that it is the same appearance on the front and the back. This one consists of seven rows of stockinette and then seven rows of reverse stockinette. And it's done by turning the work over using the garter bar just like doing garter stitch involves turning the work over. So that's how it looks steamed out so it's flat. So here it is from the side all curled up. It's on the bottom of this long sample of, of different garter bar techniques. And see how that, how that bounces up? So this is a stitch that can be used to get this specific effect. Now here's the pre procedure for doing Quaker stitch. The first thing to do is to depress the part button on the carriage and bring it from right to left so that the yarn will be on the other side along with the carriage. And then unthread the carriage and move it out of the way. So now I have this unthreaded, and I'm ready to put the garter bar on it. So I bring the needles all the way forward, and I get the needle stopper, and set the needle stopper on it. Then the knitting needs to be pushed back. That pushing the needles back, the knitting back, opened all of the latches. Then, of course, the garter bar has to be grooved up so that in a minute, when I flip it over, it'll flip over easily. Then you just pull the knitting onto the garter bar and pull it all the way down, just like you're making garter stitch. Push in a little and then lift off so that all of the latches are open. Then you turn over the knitting and you want to match up what needle you're on with the knitting and you just hold the groove down against the hooks of the knitting machine needle and you can curve it a little and pull the garter bar right out. So now the knitting is reversed so that I can knit the next seven rows. So you thread the carriage, you push the yarn back against the gate pegs and you knit the next seven rows. So let me run through the procedure just once more and then I hope that you will practice this on your own. So I'm putting in one part button and doing the free pass for the first step. And because I don't do the constant flipping every single row where I was constantly having to knit back on the left and free pass coming from the right, then as soon as I get across on this one, I turn the, the part button off because I'm going to need to knit in both directions in just a minute. And then I unthread, and there's the yarn hanging there. The needles come out. Carry a little more out of the way. Needles come out, and then the stopper goes on. The knitting is pushed back against the stopper, which opens all the latches. And then the garter bar is placed grooved side up on the individual hooks. So every one of these eyelets is actually in its appropriate hook. Nothing is loose. Then you just pull it on. And then push back a little to open the hooks. And lift the garter bar off. Reverse the knitting. And then lay the garter bar on the the matching needles and you lay it kind of flat, horizontal, and make sure that that it's um, catching all of the hooks underneath. So that reverses the knitting. Then you simply push it back again, re-thread the carriage, and you're ready to knit the next few rows. This is a wonderful stitch and I hope you'll practice it and I hope you'll find some interesting uses for it.